So listen, I appreciate your candor about your interest and appetite in pro wrestling. We do know you, you wind up going back to work for Vince. We said in July of Oh two, you're going to hang around there. And then I think you'll wind up in like Oh seven. You'll have some sporadic appearances here and there, but there's a couple of years where you're just seemingly solely focusing on your non wrestling ventures, if you will. During that 07 to 09 time frame, or at any point prior to that, had you checked out TNA programming at all? Like, did you know, I, obviously, you know, Jeff Jarrett's involved, but were you seeing the way the program looked on television? Were you hearing anything from people in the business? What was your perception of TNA at that point? Yeah, I dropped in to see what it was all about. You know, I run into somebody and, and they'd ask me about, you know, TNA or if I'd seen it or whatever. So, you know, I checked it out a few times and, you know, it was, you know, it's a studio wrestling show, no matter it's in the soundstage and, and that vibe just isn't one that can get me excited about the product, regardless of who's in a ring or how great the action or even the stories are when you're in that small studio environment, it just, it's just really hard to get my attention. So I had dropped in on it, saw what it was, and uh, that was about it. You know, I probably spent a total of 10 minutes, you know, watching TNA before I ended up having my first meeting with Dixie Carter. I watched a little bit more prior to that meeting, but in terms of my general viewing, I maybe dropped in once or twice for a couple minutes and checked it out to see what it was all about. Let's talk a little bit about um, the way this opportunity first comes to be. I mean, we had heard about Hulk Hogan and TNA for years. I mean, they had teased the whole thing with Jeff Jarrett and Japan, and and here comes the guitar shot, and up comes Hulkster Bloody. The Hulkster was just maybe creating a little leverage for Vince. He went and got some more paydays, roll tide. But now there's going to be another bite at the apple. Does Hulk reach out to you and say, Hey brother, they're calling me about TNA. I want you to take a look or walk us through how that whole conversation happens between you and Mr. Balea. Yeah. Um, that's where it got interesting. You know, there was a lot going on at that time, not just with me and my business and Jason's, but with Hulk, um, we all know his backstory during this period of time. There was, you know, his son's accident. There was a divorce. There was, there was a lot of drama going on. Oh yeah. And that's when a lot of the surgery started happening. Back surgery, neck surgery, knee surgery, hip surgery. It was all, his back was really, really bothering him at that point. Really bothering him. It was to the point where he couldn't get in and out of a car. You know, I, I felt horrible for him. We'd, we'd go somewhere, we'd go out to dinner or something. And <clears throat> just watching him trying to get out of a vehicle was painful to watch more or less what he was going through. And we had gotten very close during that period of time. And I had tried to help Hulk with things outside of wrestling, just managing his personal business. Uh, and it got to the point where he was in such tough shape and with all of the drama going on with regard to the divorce, I was taking, not taking over, but I was essentially managing his business issues for him with him he Hulk told me look you you speak for me if if you want to agree to a deal on my behalf you don't even have to ask you know keep me in a loop but you speak for me were his exact words so that was with regard to his trademarks and and all of that so at some point I guess it was Jeff probably Jeff I don't know that for certain I'm assuming it was Jeff reached out to Hulk and said that you know, he and Dixie would love to have a meeting with him. And, and again, I don't know what Hulk said on that call. I wasn't on it, but basically, you know, let them know that I was handling his business and I was working with an attorney. It's not like I was writing contracts. I was working with two, two different attorneys and one of his accountants, but um, let them know that uh, if, if Hulk was going to come on board, that in all likelihood, I'd be coming with him. And that's, I think the first meeting was on a jet. I think they flew down to Florida or perhaps they were already in Florida and were heading back to Nashville. Um, jumped on a jet, flew to Nashville and went to Dixie's home and had our first meeting. Talk me through 
your expectations going into that meeting? Did you think, Hey, we're going to go kick the tires. I don't know that there's really anything here, but you know, uh, it means a lot to Hulk and, and, and he means a lot to me. So I'm going to be there to support my friend, but realistically, I don't know about this. That's the vibe. I think you would approach it with. I'm not saying that you're inherently negative. I know you're a positive guy. I know that that's the way your brain works. You're the damn, the torpedoes dude. But at this point seeing that, Hey man, my man's struggling to get out of a car. Why are we having a wrestling conversation? I could see you saying to yourself, I'm going to do this, but it feels like a waste of time. No, that would be a, a fair assumption for the people that know me, but and I'm struggling again because I got to be careful what I say here. Some of this is just not my business to share, but because of the divorce. Oh, I got you. Because of this giant unknown in terms of how that was going to turn out. Cash flow was kind of important to Hulk. Got it. I understand. And I don't think he want. you know, Hulk's a complicated dude. Sometimes he loves I mean, his identity in many respects, up until probably the last couple of years, it was kind of like Ric Flair. You know, they just can't separate the character from the person. Mm -hmm. And they miss that person. They miss that character. They miss going out and performing in front of a live crowd. They miss the crowd support. They just, it's been their lives. It's their identity. So Hulk was struggling with that, but his physical condition wasn't going to allow him to, to get too involved. I'm not going to say he needed the money. He didn't need it, but it was a strategic advantage at that time. Yes. So I knew he would likely do something if the money was right. And I wanted to at least be there to help him navigate that. Again, I was working with his attorney. I wasn't out there freelancing and trying to write contracts or approve contracts. But in terms of managing it, I, I went into it with, okay, if, if he wants to do this, I want to, do whatever I can do to make sure it's the best deal for him. And that he doesn't commit to things because that's another thing about Hulk is he'll get excited and have all the most honest, greatest intentions in the world, but he'll commit to things that physically at that time, he just really wasn't capable of doing. It's like he didn't want to admit that he could do certain things physically, just refused to admit it. So he'd agree to do things and then it ends up being an issue down the road. So I was there basically just to help him score the deal. I wanted, if he wanted it, I was there to help him get the deal he needed or wanted. And that was about it. I had no intentions, zero intentions or interest. And again, it's not because I had a bad impression or perception. It wasn't that. It's just, I didn't want to disrupt the life I had with the wrestling project that I knew was going to eat up a lot of space inside my head. Regardless of whether or, not I had, whether or not I had to be there physically, I knew it was going to eat up a lot of space in my head, and I just was trying to prevent that.